I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you guys have all been through them. I'll go through them afterwards. We only have, I have, we have one that you guys need to vote on. I wasn't at. Okay. Is there any other minutes we need to? This one. I was you were at that meeting. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 26th. As written. Second. Oh, he wasn't at that meeting. He wasn't at that I meeting. I second it. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. I made the motion, so. Yep. No, I've read those. Yeah. Let me just browse these quickly. This is the. Um, okay. That's what Gene looking at. Right. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion um, on the minutes of March nineteenth. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. All those uh, second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We got a resident coming in at 345. So let's talk about old business. High Street Tower. We um, discussed last time looking at the high street tower and obviously not giving up the um, the tower location of the tower. Um, I think we're looking at the potential of having an analysis done on it. Yeah, we're gonna. What is your next? Appointments with Merrifew or U.S. Utility Services to do tank. I'm going to be lining up the inspections. So you line them up to do High Street too. Yeah, I'm just wondering. If it, I was wondering what if it was a. It's not a hydraulic <laughs> issue, so it's a question of what's, what's what repairs issue? need to be done to the tank to make it sealed from any kind of um, like that and any other any structural, structural or, yeah. issue or whatever. Yes. So they'll give a tank report. And then, then the question is, because we have reports from uh, our engineers at the time that the water wasn't moving properly from that tank. So once once we get a report, I'm not going to waste time analyzing it until I can take it take me half a day to look at it. I'm not going to waste the half a day of my time until it's a tank that's worth wasting well, half a day. I've reached on. out and <laughs> from EPG. Their recommendation is that's so low on the totem pole with all you've got for your 10 year master plan, yeah. they wouldn't even consider anything for moving forward with a new tank or bringing one up there. Between going forward with Swanberg's well site, yeah. recommendation for a 750,000 gallon tank at Oak Street yeah. and take that one down. Well, so we've got so many other projects. Well, I wasn't looking at it as, as, the, as the point of taking it going down. Back up. I'm looking at the Same point as was it functioning? It's uh, fun. It will function. And, and the question is, is it something that we should think about re reactivating? As it sits, not... As it sits. I would, I, my thing is, I'll tell you right now, it's not going to come back favorable to re reuse that existing structure. And that's why. Let's that's just why have it done so they, they can... Take it off yep. the board. Because at some point, Gene, the question, I guess, was then, is it... When did it become structurally unsound and need to come down? Right. I don't know if somebody cables holding up right now. probably couldn't fall over from one to. But that's that's a catch twenty two of right. When it does fall over, why didn't you do something? Yes. So and, and you know what? And and we're not getting um, any revenue off of the the towers that are on there. And the question is, are we keeping it up just because of that? 
And so if it's an unsafe structure, we have to, as commissioners, address it. That's all. Anything else? Swanberg. Where are we with the drilling? It's in the motion. We're going to put 12 weeks before you get your final results, but right now they're waiting for Mr. Sullivan for the schedule when he can come in and drill the 8 inch test well so they can do with it what they got to do. So, so it's they, in the works. So they drill the test wells. And they do their pump tests. Do their pump tests. Drawdowns. And all the water send quality out the, analysis. Send that report. out. So they figure 12, 12 weeks, weeks on water quality. That's about a week into it now. So is that with, is that testing 1 and 10? Or did we already get 10? Well, the, I, I don't know what they're doing with the one test only. wells. I think, but I think this one. is just for the 1. Because 1 is the 1. We were only going to do any do multiple wells when 1 wasn't an option because of the land issue. Yeah. The other two were my, uh, marginal. Right. I think, well, we were looking at 10 because it had the distances away from the setbacks that we needed. There is, it's one. volume. The setbacks don't matter. It's volume. It's, there's, you can have a, but we gonna, setbacks all over the place. But you were going to drill you more. Water water. You were going to drill more to find out, correct? No. On one. No, we're going to drill one, a big well, and pump it and like pump a it. real well. Right. That I believe was the final game plan. Have we resolved the land issue over there? No. We're going to go to remember we're going to go to Fall Town meeting, but we're going to wait and see but, whether it's worth doing it. Right. Based on but the do we test. know that one? Falls in, in the we, we, we land that perimeters we, that we need. If no, the issue we, we you guys decided at the last meeting, and I agreed that one has issues with setbacks, but why not just move forward with it? Because the guy's willing to do the land swap, right. but we're going to do the land swap at Fall Town meeting. But if we don't need it, if the if this test well comes work. back bad, then we don't need to go forward at Fall Town meeting with the land swap. That was where we stood at the last meeting. Yeah, but if it's a viable site, I don't see the land swap holding up. No. But there's just no way to have enough information and Kaufman and Page to put language together to be able to do it this springtime meeting. So we decided, right. let's at least move forward with the test and we'll do it in the fall if we need to. Because that, that's the amount of money we have to do, get it done. If Anything else on Swanberg? Stormwater data. We had that discussion before you got here, and I said, I can't believe you guys authorized environmental partners to do more GIS work when they did shitty work the last time. So I said they better give us a good flushing map and um, fix the problems with the stormwater map, or in my opinion, they shouldn't be working here anymore. Anybody else have any comment? Did they do, is that the same, same company that did the leak test? No. No. You don't have any comment about their capability or what they've done? I don't know anything about the GIS stuff and the stormwater stuff. That's Jason's bag, not mine. But I know they, I sent them a follow-up email. They had, with Jason's I can concerns. tell you what it was. They had multiple locations where there was catch basins on top of catch basins. Or manholes on top of catch basins, or manholes on top of manholes. One point, one one location, one type of structure. You can't have two structures at the same exact location. Didn't. Have they agreed to clean it up? Have they agreed to do well, anything I, I about shot them an, an email with Jason's concerns, and we've actually got a meeting with them tomorrow at one o'clock. And that's well, one of the things that's going to get discussed. I would think that, you know. They owe us to clean up these things. Um, anything else on stormwater? Pavement management update. Right now, with the money we got coming in July, it looks like we're going to do. The rest of Hobbamock Street and Lake Street from Learning Lane where we ended all the way to 27. 
crack seal and level in, and then come back and do the micro from route 36 all the way to 27. And then I had mentioned to Ben what I'm thinking, because it'll only leave us about 125, maybe 150 grand left, is maybe have TL give us a price for the center of town here to try and incorporate the section we own from Stop and Shop to Curve, where they're doing it from Hanson Town Line all the way to 53, because we're going to have to do something with that section shortly anyways. So when you talk about the micro sale, and you're talking about from 27 to Halifax? No. From Obmark Street 36, where we did last year's road project on the sidewalk, all the way to 27 by the bus lot. So the entire oh, okay. Street. Okay. And we're going to put High Street... It's the top priority next year, theoretically. High Street's going to be two or three years because that's full depth reclamation. So we're going to do the, we're not going to? I told Fran to come out and take another look because okay. we had that's promised fine. High Street. And he said, I don't know what I saw different last year. He said, this is full depth reclamation. I said, okay. no. That's fine. And yeah. again, that's the point. He's he's willing to tell you what the right. truth is. And that's why I asked him to take another look because yeah. I said full depth from the get go. Yeah. And when he looked, he said, there's no way we can do my process. I'm yeah. like, okay. So... Just to reclaim it and get a binder down is six hundred and seventy-four thousand. Yeah. So you're looking at one full years, and then probably a second full years to come back and top the whole thing too. So would we entertain cold in place? We're willing to entertain anything just to try it. I'm, try I'm not trying to be. I'm just looking because for me, it's. It, the, I haven't seen it done, so it's, I, it's yeah. interesting. I, I don't, I've never seen it. I've never had somebody use it. Right. Braintree's used it. We've seen the hot in place. We've gone out yeah. for that. No, we're willing to try anything and see what works for us and what doesn't. Yeah. But again, like we went and saw a hot in place. Yeah. And you have to have so much mix before. And that's what he said. That's what they'll so do. I don't know if that's required. They'll do. They will. They'll, 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 place. they'll come in and they core it. Yeah. yeah. When I went to the thing, they'll come in and do cores along the street. And see how much mix you have. If you don't have enough mix, what they do, which is really strange, is they'll actually come. And they'll run the drag box with aggregate in it, and then they'll use that aggregate to add to the base, and then they put the emulsion in to your aggregate. So if you actually say you have a bunch of grindings on site, some some of my clients do, and they'll just drag box their existing millings they in front of the machine. They reheat that as it goes. It goes into the machine. The machine takes the yeah. machine grinds up what's there, takes those millings in, mixes them with emulsion and hot emulsion. And, and then lays it back road. down as basically a road. It's weird. I, I don't. Well, I'm it's, not saying it's it's it's, it's smart if, it, if it works. It, it, they're doing it. I'm they sure. It, I'm sure it's all road conditions. What's existing and yes. what isn't. And it take, there's a lot of engineering on it because they have to take and they do. They actually do mixed designs specifically based on every road core that they take, based on thickness and whatnot. It's a and what, and what actually exists there. Yes. But it can save money. To me, it's in the end. All of this is stretching, stretching, well, stretching the, the, the two pennies we have to rub yeah, so together. Unless we get, we get this town meeting yeah. thing. So the, so the question Even is, that, you're still gonna have to stretch that ain't gonna help you. Why not? Because they signed complete streets. So now, any Why road, they, sign they signed it a little while ago. Who did the plan? Selectman. They signed complete streets. Who did the who did the who did the, the priority plan? Did, prioritization I did plan. Didn't we say no? We said no three times. My understanding is they signed complete streets. You can give us three hundred thousand dollars, ain't gonna get another foot of road done. <laughs> they signed it because they were going to get, I don't know, a couple, ten or fifteen thousand dollars for sort of some handicap curb cuts or something that 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 it was it was free money. So without even reading the fine print, we're a complete street member. Hmm. So. They want to vote for three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars at town meeting and think that their street's going to get moved up on the list. 
Not going to happen. Do you ever envision... This is a loaded question. Do you ever I envision retirement coming earlier than anticipated? <laughs> well, that's another discussion. <clears throat> Do you ever envision getting to side streets at the rate we're going? When I say side streets, I mean streets like Well, we're up. No, well, okay. I'll say it. All right. I'll be say honest. It. I mean, it's. I'll say it. It's a shitty street. Saltzman. With any, money, any of the, with the money we get, with the money we get. you're going to have to, because you're not going to have enough to tackle a full reclamation. So you're going to have to do a couple of side streets with a different. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying, with this money and with the amount of main roads that we have to do, do you ever envision getting to the side streets? No. By the time we get the main roads done, some of the ones we've done, we're going to be back doing again. No, you're right. I, it's because people don't understand. If if it was my own money, I'd be taking care of my infrastructure that's in decent shape to prolong its good life. But unfortunately, <coughs> the roads are so bad that need the full depth reclamation and, and stuff. With all the complaints you get, and those got to become your priority because of all the insurance claims. Understood. Because of nothing getting done. Understood. But to do it right, but I would you, be invested in my streets that are already decent and prolong their life instead of dumping into the most expensive re reclassification to take care of the issue. But... Yeah, it's, there's no way you can say, yeah, I'm not doing high, I'm not doing valley, I'm going to do no, and I, 10 I, subdivisions. I realize that. So by the time you do high and valley and some of the main roads and the, the secondary main roads, I'll call them, by the, by the time those years go by, and for example, West Elm needs to be redone again. Yeah, you're right. Dwelly. Yeah. Dwelly, another one. And those were only done about eight years ago, 10 years ago. Probably 10 okay. close. No, I don't. It's a never-ending battle. Which is the only reason why I think that the, not a bad way that everything we do now should be topped with a micro because at least it lasts. Right. You can you can say it has its issues, and I know it does with plows and whatnot. We got to deal with it because but we can get that's those. that's fine. But what I don't like about that is the the gentleman said we're basically incompetent the way we plow. And it had nothing to do with the plow. No, he don't said it was the plow itself. Yeah, it wasn't we'll you. Get into that. It we'll get into that. It was the plow. The, you, you admitted that the truck has a bad front end. It's an old truck, right? No, I didn't admit that. Well, you said it's an old truck. They're old trucks, but every truck passes inspection before it starts plowing every year. Okay. I, did you? Did, Fran was willing to go out and meet with you and look at the truck itself. I don't know if you guys reached out to him before but the meeting or not. To do I that. never got anything for Fran coming out but to did meet Did he say he'd come out and, and, and deal with that issue? Yeah, well, he's going to be right. here. Yeah. Right. He's going to be here. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Or, or the other option is you go to rubber, rubber, rubber plow blades. It'd be less wear and tear on all the streets in town if you go to rubber plow blades. And more ice pack. More, more salt. Well, the other towns do it. There's a trade off to everything. Right. I mean, there's, you know, there's a trade off to everything. Once you get your big salt on, you'll be all set. Anything else on the pavement management? Nope. Planning board spec requirement for road acceptance. We were going to develop. I never got the thing, so I didn't do anything. What were you supposed to get? I was going to get the handover thing. I never got it. And I, I have it. Visually. I have it. Yeah, last meeting. I have it. I know, but I don't, I don't have it. I don't right. physically have it. I can't, so I can't I have work it. off my memory it. all the time. Paul will get it over time. I'll get it. Thank you. I took it to the to the board, show them what's going on with the catch basins, yeah. and explain to them why we think the diff has changed in town, and that it's primarily because we don't use a landfill any longer, that we use the trash pickup, which is getting rides right close to the curb, and is sitting on those uh, grates, and that's part of the problem. They're not designed, and they're not built according to for that kind of wear and tear. Well, yeah. I think I think people take I think everyone takes you know as the opinion when we talk about being built with brick that we're thinking red brick and the contractor is thinking uh, concrete brick because it's still called a brick and right. it doesn't stand up it's not a, uh, a heat fired uh, product and doesn't last as long and I think the idea of Packing them in 
along with the, you know, seeing that the, the concrete is up too close to the pavement and not actually holding is another issue that needed to be addressed. And so I think the board was lo looking at that as far as dealing with that in the regs. And I showed it to, uh, to the engineer. Yeah. He was kind of surprised as to what's going on. And you'll send the information. I get that to, to Jason. Jason. I get that to Jason. Yeah. Or Merrill's going to do the detail. Merrill can do it too. I don't, right. I don't need to draw it. They, they can take that and draw it too. Right. They get paid by you guys. Well, they, yeah, they have to take and, and, and vote on it to accept it yeah. and put it into the ranks. Will you follow up on that with yeah. us for us, please? Yeah. Um, town meeting articles. Anything new there, Gene, that we need to be aware of? Only this. I heard that the override is <coughs> all grouped together, not separate articles. Yeah. And we had to pull uh, cemetery equipment because there is no money. There's no funding. Yeah. The, what everybody thought was coming off the books that was going to be able to take it over is not off the books yet. So my just told me to pull it. Not going to pay for it on yeah. time. Yeah. Floor. There's and no it, funding it, it, source, so we'll just hold it and resubmit when there's funding. Anything else on those articles? Okay. Status of uh, snow ops and work order implementation? And we don't know anything different than the last time you guys had to meet. So everything is in the hands of. I think they're waiting on work orders for cleaned up data from Natalie because they can't do work orders on bad data. Who's Natalie? EPG. How long is it going to You're meeting with EPG to tomorrow? Yes. Say that again, Paul. How long do they, do they estimate that this is going to take? Is this going to be an ongoing issue or is this going to... Well, I think, if, out. I think if EPG cleans up whatever it is, do does, do do we, Gene, the, the town, owe them people GIS any more information, or it's just it's just EPG cleaning up the data? I think we, Gene and I can meet and give him a call together in the same room. Okay. Do we do we already buy the uh, the iPads or the? I don't think we bought anything yet. No. I'll, I'll come in at some point, Gene, and I can have a conference call with them and get everything squared away. Do we need to discuss anything on the 10-year master plan? Not yet. You got the updated um, cost of the tall pines. I got to sit down with Richie, uh, primary treatment operator, and go over some of the upgrades we want at the filtration plant so we can get those prices updated. But then we'll have to decide which way we want to move, how much we want to borrow, because the other big one we're going to have to have money and borrow for is Route 36, transferring all those water services and tying in all the side streets with six and eight inch taps off the 16 to abandon that whole length of eight. Any other? Is that is that about the same cost that we did for Parker Street. There'll be a lot more. This was only 25, no, 50 services. This will be all the services plus the big taps to tie in all the side streets. I'm going to say that's probably going to be 1.2, 1.5 mil. I think so. All right. We've got a lot of big streets down there. And not a lot of oddball interconnections that we could easily right. eliminate stuff. Okay. Like here, we lucked out with, with what was existing to make it as minimal as possible. In our ability to plan pavement management, would you just please confirm with Sabrina that we are a member of Complete Streets? I'm trying to confirm that right now. I'm pulling up the map, but we have bad service here. We need to confirm that. I was I was told that by I believe by Ed Thorne in a meeting that they had signed on to complete streets.
You know, it's too bad. I mean, it'd be great if we can sign on and have money to take and do it. I will. I recall being taken back by the fact that we signed on to Complete Streets, and it, and it was in a forum which I didn't have the ability to have a discussion about. The downside. Um, is Richard McKenzie here yet? I believe he is. So, Scott, you want to take this? Yeah, you can have mine. I'll go up there. I, no, I'm going to take that. Good morning. Okay. Good to see you. How you doing? Nice to see you. Jason Federico, Paul nice Whitman. What's up? Um, this is my driveway. When they created the road. Almost right across from the Tiny dump cross, cross with the dump yeah. entrance almost. That's that's the that's the rink on the yeah. other side, correct? Right? Yeah. It's the rink over here, there's the, the landfill right there. Okay. 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 I was just trying to no trying to get a working for that. Gene, have you seen these? Pictures no. Scott and Joel have been out there. Too many buttons. I know you. You guys keep are talking. button pushers. They just keep pushing the buttons. <laughs> now, what used to happen? Yeah. In that on I the had a line. little bit of water. Everything come down. So what I did is I made a little. I put a little coal patch. I used to clean out the leaves. Right. All the water would run right over to the catch basin. Now it just sits there. There's such a high lip that I, it won't go uphill. And if I, I started making a trench, that was my granddaughter takes the bus, right. and she went out, there was ice, and she fell and hit her head. And that's why I said, okay, I gotta dig something out. Right. It was just temporary to get the ice out of there. Um, so what can I do to correct this? Did, did we raise that road? Yeah. Yeah, we, we paved. However, we paved it and backed up the berm. Right, yeah. but we, we ground it down and then did we lift it? How much did we lift it by? Two inches? We're, we're just at about the same grade. What it is, we backfilled the berm on the back side. Yeah. The, the berm, there was no berm there before when we ground it. It just all over so the water. Was so the water could shed off anywhere. Yes. Now we so got now a berm and a it berm runs down the berm and, and his driveway is the back first up the open. Berm. The problem is the water's not running off of our street. It's all water from his property that's pooling there, which used to be able to run across the road. Where we repaired the road, it doesn't run across the right, road. Because we don't really want the water running onto the road. No. So the question is, what do we do to alleviate next to the we, road? We gave him suggestions of putting a drain digging out beside his driveway and stoning it, and right. the water should infiltrate on the side of his driveway to keep the water on his property. Right. So this is water coming from, if, if I'm property. looking at those pictures and I'm looking down the driveway, his house is behind me. Yep. The water's coming from there down, and it's not able to go out in the street anymore, so it's backing up because we... When he we has paved, a low spot in his driveway. Right, right at the bottom. So one of our, our problems is, and I'm on the planning board, and besides this board, is when we create a street, is to make sure that property is not putting water onto the roadways, and then it has to be controlled onto the on their property, um, on your property. And before, with the way the road was, obviously it sounds like it, the water would flow across and naturally head over towards the so rink or to the dump, and then then migrate wherever. And so I think. What probably has to happen is you almost have to 
create a, a dry well or something to one side of the lowest spot you have so the water will will run off of your driveway at that berm because we're not finished yet. I know. Uh, we have a topping going on there to take, and take this road probably for hopefully for 12 years or, or, or longer uh, before any other improvements would be ever done to it. The, the micro we're going to put on is yeah, not going to make any but difference it's gonna, No, it's not going to help us. So whatever happens has to probably happen down at that lowest point, in other words, to dig a hole and try to hopefully have material that will percolate that water, infiltrate the water back into the ground. Um, you know, in, at the front. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's obviously it's water that's running down your driveway, you know, sheeting. So I'm not sure there's anything we could really do to improve it. I mean, I mean, our, our, our problem is safety in the winter time when water sheets across salt and yeah, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So we kind of yeah. I work for the public works. I yeah. work crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, when I seen them grading road, right. they were grading this. Well, actually, Susie just did a road in Quincy. Right. And they took it right down. They raised the catch basins. Right. Everything, and then they just they actually they just topped it, and everything's level. I didn't see any ramps, you know, I was down there last night, I didn't see, you know, I got like a high lip coming in. Right. You had to have gone up for it to be like that. Yeah, we're up, yeah, we're, we're up, we're up the back side of the berm. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah, we did, we're, we're, we're trying to make a, uh, take a road that obviously over the course of time is not, you know, we don't, I don't necessarily know how much material was on the existing road, um, but in this case here, we've made this uh, with the with the what we're going to put on it later. Uh, a little little different. The material's a little different. It's a little, little heavier. The street's higher. Yeah. And it's going to be higher. It's going to be a little bit more, a little higher than it used to be. Yeah. Just the, the berm is. Just the berm? Isn't yeah. the streets the same? So the streets, streets, at, streets, the streets are the same elevation streets, as the driveway? Streets are almost See, the what same he's saying is we back this like up here right. behind the berm, yeah. and the water used to come down and run yeah. because there was no berm and there was no backup. Yeah. The water, when it got to this point, you can see it's trying to go through. Yeah. But because we backed up and put a berm in, we stopped it from going through the way it used to. It yeah. used to go right through and just yeah. hit the street and keep going. But it can't anymore because of the it's the berm backup. Yeah, it almost looks like it needs to go to the right. Yeah, well, that's what it's trying to do. Yeah. See, right here. Which it can't it, it's actually it's actually property. going that way, and it's it's capillary action up into the dirt. Right. But if that dirt and berm weren't there, it would continue it would flow. Away. It would it would flow away. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I don't think not much we can do on your property. Yeah, no. I can we? I was thinking, what if we just put um, a piece of four-inch perforated pipe in the berm and just, you know, put a ten-foot section and buried it back in the berm so when the water gets to here, it can get into that pipe and at least run underground and maybe that'll perk away enough to... Because we're going to send it into his neighbor's property if we do that. How far he's away? Got one, he's got one neighbor before the low spot in the road, and that's what it's doing right now. He dug out a he dug out a ditch in front of the. Um, is is this? This is the corner of your driveway. Yep. Is this your property where the tree is? Um, the tree is mine. It's How right much? on the edge. The driveway is pretty close to the edge of the property line. Now. Not on it, but it's it's close enough that there's not much room there. Not much room. To pipe it down the street, we're just going to push it into the. Well, I'm not. Problem. I'm not interested in piping it down the street. I'm just trying to create a some kind of a dry I, I well you, situation. I think you need to probably right beside you, right beside the driveway. There is is is, is create a trench there with some gravel to take and uh, try to percolate that at the lowest point to try to relieve it. The problem is, is that, that, that that's the problem with with water. I mean, a lot of times now you. 
we, you know, there's, there's, there's regs now that as far as infiltrating that water in, on your property, you know, and trying to not put surfaces that don't uh, take and allow uh, drainage. But I mean, this here is existing, doesn't apply to you. The only corrective thing I would say is that, that you put a trench there next to your driveway and try to percolate it in as best as possible for everybody. Um, yeah, I was just wondering what I could do without, you know. Yeah, I don't. Th I I think if if you know if you're on the over at the DPW in Quincy, you know if you went down a couple of feet right there and brought in some stone and put it in, it's probably gonna. I mean, Pembroke's loaded with gravel and sand. Yeah, no. So I don't. chances are it's gonna get out. Take a post hole digger and pop a couple of. Yeah, either, of, uh, either that of or deep, deep ones and try to percolate them. Or right down the edge of the driveway, put in a, a piece of perforated pipe, right. a couple of four inches below grade, so that the water, you know, it'll 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 run into that pipe and maybe give enough perk area underground. Right, to relieve it. Or, or just dig a drywall. Try that. Right. Well, it's definitely. There's a few things you can do to control it on your own property, that's for sure. Um, yeah, as far as the road, the road's supposed to be finished this spring. Yeah, is it the, is after July? July, the new July more, money. Money. more money. That's going to be the final topping on that. So, hopefully, uh, right. I wish we could come up with something for you, but it's kind of not on town property, unfortunately. If it was coming from the road, it'd be a different discussion. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, actually we've got some of those where we have situations where we're really violated. And we've had our own issues. It paved over, right over the manholes. We got a call, sewer back up. We go out in the middle of the night looking for the cover. It went right over it. Yeah, yeah. And metal detector to find it. Yeah, we had to dig it out. <laughs> Susie's in trouble with the mayor. I know that much. It happens. Because I have a job that's on hold now because of it. I'm doing the cemetery <laughs> paving job. Oh, really? <coughs> I bid it, and Susie got it, but due to the issues they're running into with Susie right now, it might not happen. Yeah, but they're doing a nice job, and the water lines. Yeah. Yeah, they, they work all night, and I'm not. Counting not and digging up Quincy, so right. Well, very familiar with it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, sorry, we couldn't do much. But thank you thank for you. coming. Yes, we could. All right. Thanks. Thank All right. Have a nice. Have a good one too. Yep. Conservation discussion about tree planting. I take it that's what you're here for. We got a letter, and this is this is also in relation to the letter that Bobby Clark wrote us. No, no, this, this is a separate issue than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Separate issue altogether. Okay. Rick, Matt, how do you do? Um, we planted trees on the 300 and got permission to do it at windswept bogs. I took the liberty of planting a tree on a better bog, which I thought was much better habitat. Ends up being it is. Um, that tree outgrew the other like five to one. And the rotary bogs, I don't know what the name of them are. What is the rotary bog actually called? Swan Swan Andrek. No, Andrek. 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 Andrek bogs okay. up at the road, up yep. at the. Andrew the Bonds. rotary, yeah, that's a rotary. <coughs> we have, about, it's a rotary. We have a roundabout rotary. There. It's a rotary. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, um, that's a perfect habitat. It's a wet bog. One of the biggest uh, things to do trees in in Plymouth when they planted them was they fenced out the predators, the deer, these little things called bulls with orange teeth. They want bark. Um, they come in and habitat and just tear them up. We lost, that was the biggest thing we lost, the little bowl ate like 15,000 trees. <coughs> that bog is a wet bog, it doesn't have bowls. Also in the future if it was to be flooded, um, it would take out the invasive species of maple, which is the European 
swamp maple, which is predominantly taking over it, which is a non-native species. You flood that for two weeks in the spring when it's in bloom, it dies. No chemicals, nothing. Uh, a North Atlantic cedar tree is a species that was wiped out before we were a country. There's not a mature one left in Massachusetts they can show you anywhere. It's like taking out the last redwood. They're a cypress sinker type of cedar. They have buttress roots that lock themselves together as one tree. The whole bog would become stable. It promotes long-term uh, percolation and control of water infiltration and storage. It cools the bog down, it covers it over, and peat, as you know, those beds retain in a one half inch top layer of a peat bed years of bog um, residue material coming through the sand gets lodged in the first half inch of the bog and stays there forever. This is a peat bed bog. Had some issues here and there with some uh, alleged contamination. I think it's just a no brainer to lock it up, cool it down. These trees were cut at the town park, at the ballparks. We're still trying to get those trees and plant them. They're in the bank. We need a place to plant them, but we can't get them. It's been years to get these trees planted. I can get the trees for a dollar ten cents a piece. They are two by two by four plants, not bare root, so I can order them for an event instead of getting bare root once a year when they give it to you, which stresses things out. <coughs> trying to get it to a date. So I can order them on Monday, have them two days later, and we're hoping to plant a thousand trees. We have the, uh, the Mattachista Garden Club very active, wants to plant trees. New England Village, they're gracious, they come and they love planting trees. We have Peter from the Blooming Place, they won their big Stanley Cup for the kids. He has about you know 20 kids with families, they want to plant trees to commemorate their win for that year. And we have a good following to plant trees. Are these know. the same trees that we planted up behind the... North Atlantic uh, Cedars. Behind the... Uh, Log 12. The water park. Yeah, yeah. behind yeah. the... Now, we've had some success rate. I planted a lot of those trees were actually taken out the first year, uh, rescue trees for the 300. I provided those. We planted another 1,000 trees, which um, that's a high bog in a year ago, two years we had the drought. That's a tailings bog, and it's sometimes wet, sometimes not, but it's a really hard bed bog. I want to put the other tree in for true five to one ratio. It's actually seven feet tall, you can see it on the corner of the bog. And uh, it's just a no-brainer to me that that's the habitat to plant them in. And people can see it as they drive by, and it's, hey, look, we planted these trees, and the kids plant the tree, it grows in the town. And this is a 300-year uh, process to put this back in its total working shape of the North Atlantic rainforest. And it is a coastal rainforest that went from Canada to Florida. Only 79% of it is gone. And they're the tree that, well, let's say we're sitting in a great cedar swamp zone. The school is the Round the Cedar Swamp School. And to me, it's our town tree. What is it that you need from us? We need permission to plant them on that particular bog, that location. What is... <clears throat> I don't think the DPW has the authority to grant any permission with anything with that bog. It's all going to go through DEP. Starting in Lakeville, <clears throat> and they may kick it up to Boston because of the grant, $450,000 grant that helped purchase that property and their restrictions. And their restrictions? Yes. But everything would have to be run through them. I had to, to try and get a couple of easements we needed for the sidewalk and a couple of national grid poles. Can you give Mr. Madden a contact person or somebody that we can oh, you file and see if I can get my contact that started everything down in Lakeville? The other process was to revert back to Bog 12 and plant this year. We have plenty of people waiting. We have the trees available. And that would be a already pre-established location. That's I'll just plant them in the wetter area. That's the one behind Yes, the that's Auburn. Pretty much that was an North Atlantic Cedar Swamp. Do we have that authority, Gene? Yes, that was all bought with water revenue. There is no restrictions through the state USDA, like the other bogs that have been purchased. And they've already the planted Elmont. there once already. And, and again, we do random planting, nothing, you know, that's not random. Right. Only fertilizers uses seaweed, it's all organic, and, uh, you know. I don't have a problem with it. That's a good location. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to the effect that we allow the plant planting as a uh, so cedar, cedar, cedar tree. 1,000. 1,000. And second. All those in favor? On the what? On the bog, bog. bog. Well, uh, Yeah. Bog 12. Bog 12. Bog 12. 
We have a better. I mean, we have a better description of bog twelve. Of what bog the twelve is a wet bog. It's actually a. No, I mean our internal bog. Zanaboni bog. Zanaboni bog. Zanaboni bog. Zanaboni bog. I would still like to see you reach out oh, oh, to to the DEP and yes. work that process. I absolutely want to because. I think that's. A I'd I'd make I'd amend the motion to say if he gets permission from DEP, that he oh, can where? plant. If and when you get permission from DEP to allow planting on that bog as well. I'll second that. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. So in the event that they give you permission, yeah. you've Sooner already later, been like granted. It's, I mean, it's permission. Permission it's, to go after. You have trees growing back there right now. Yeah. yeah. So oh. the the minute they say it's good, you can. Awesome. Get right on it. Yes, yeah, so if you the, uh, can get permission this year, you. Well, we'll, we'll try. But no, I I'm saying you, know, the you, go you may. You may get it. I'm going to go after it's, it. But it's not, you know. Either way, come and plant trees. So are you just out of curiosity, are you suggesting, and I don't necessarily know that we can do it, that we flood that bog? Um, if you're going to plant North Atlantic cedars there, it's an ideal thing because you have a non-native invasive species. That secretes out anti-defoliation chemicals and nasty chemicals into the ground, so we have a very limited production situation. It never gives off oxygen 24-7. It doesn't cool water down, and it, it's just a no-brainer that, you know, I learned this when they flooded some beavers did a culvert over in Marshall, and it changed a horrible swamp of maples to a beautiful meadow in two years. They flooded them for two weeks in the spring. They died, so you learn through experience, and you look it up, and you go, whoa. Well, that's applicable, and look, they're floodplains, they're bogs. You can wipe out a non-native species and put the right species back right. and create an oxygen-rich environment and cool yeah. the water and put the sphagnum moss back in and just filter everything, yeah. soak it up like a sponge. Right. Retain it, slowly let it out, retain it, slowly let it out. But we have... Better recharge. The question is over there, we have multiple layers of that, correct? Of yep. That bogs. So you would almost have to pick and choose which area yeah. you're going to plant. Well, you don't have to do that to the trees. They could outgrow them, but to me, it's a no-brainer to take away the non-native to let that nutrient go into the cedars. If simple, it's just flooding a bog and if making the peepers happy in the spring. We don't have the right to flood that bog. Uh, any bog. I'm no, just flooding no, bogs just in saying, general terms. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't, don't have it. Right, I know every that. time it holds water, we have to get rid of it. Uh, we can try. We even can if you, even if you get approval to do that. <laughs> and why is why is that that we have to get rid of it? If it floods, because it screws our drainage up. Right, but let's say you had a plan. I mean, everything everything has a plan. You have a, a desire to take an away. I I don't believe I'd have to talk to somebody, but I don't believe we have the right to take water from Hanson anymore. They were given up with that when that bog was turned over to us. Right, okay. but there is an overflow okay. flood that we can't stop unless you put a dam up there because it's already got pipes underneath it to right. let so it reach I mean, in. So that we do receive water right. from there. It's something that we can look into if given approval. Right. I mean. Prior to. Yeah. Right. Okay. I agree. Very Thank good. you very much for your time. Thank you. And come and plant trees on Arbor Day. And I hope that uh, you get the other permission for the other place. Yeah, it should be a nice project. But any other bog throughout the whole town, you know, North Atlantic Cedars are now like a really popular way to lock up land that is agricultural. Do we have the same issue at Mattachese Street that we have to go through DMP to plant? Well. Andrew. It's either that or solar panels. Are the only <laughs> no, Andrew. Andrew is a roundabout. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Those, you, everything has to go through DEP on that one. Okay. All everything off of Elma has to go through the USDA. Okay. All the bogs up back, is that all one constituently owned piece of property? Are there are different owners in different uh, jurisdictions on the upper box? Yeah. On Andrews? Yeah. That's all. All one? All one. All one. Bottom. Town yeah. plus. So there's DEP. more than one. Well, DEP, DEP, the Water Division, and CPC funds purchase that. Okay. And that's all one. Looking right. so forward to being on information, be great to go further on that one. See where we go. But Fog Twelve is a great location too. Okay. Thank very you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is Fran out there? Yes. The Conroy. Yeah. And all the neighbor. Yeah. Huh? Sounds like a neighbor. That's not, that's not, I don't think that is. Hello, gentlemen. That's your neighbor, Maggie. All right. Hey, I'm Fran Conroy. Hi, Arnett. Nice to meet you. Hey, Scott. Hello. Nice to see you. This is Rich Goodick. How you doing? Good. Nice to see you. Rich Goodick. Rich. 
Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Conroy. Ben Bastinelli. Ben, Brad Conroy. Nice to meet you. How do you want? Senior? I don't know if there's a sign seating, but we don't have any trees to plant. <laughs> That's okay. <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> We just want to kind of go over where we are with this process that we're venturing into and talk a little bit about Birch Street and what may or may not be an issue. So Great. if you can tell us briefly the process. That, that, that we do on these road surfaces. The three roads that we worked yes. on last year? Yes, and then we can talk briefly about the specifics of Birch Street. Okay. You want me to handle that, Rich? Or? Well, I can take that. I mean, Fran obviously organized it, but the typical process we do in a lot of towns where you do a hot mix overlay shim on those a little bit further down the deterioration curve where we could just put a micro on it. So it's a little further down the curve, so you use the shim to two and level it, put some more structure back in the road, and then the microsurfacing process water, waterproofs uh, the surface and gives you a wearing surface. Um, so it's, it's more like putting a binder down for some structure and then using the microsurfacing for the top coat. It's a high friction wearing surface. Can you just briefly describe how that gets applied? Yes, it's a, um, it's a mixture of stone dust uh, an emulsion, a polymer modified emulsion, uh, cement, some water, and some field control additive. It goes through a pug mill, um, through a spreader box, from the pug mill into the spreader box. You know, it's a rapid setting material, sets in about a minute, minute and a half. Um, goes on about 32 pounds of stone dust per square yard, which is roughly just less than three eighths of an inch. It's not, a, it's not a thick overlay, it's a thin overlay. It's a thin surface treatment. Heated? No, it's cold. Everything's the ambient temperature. Rolled. It is not rolled. It's so a spread. It's spread. spread and it spread. It's not spread. spread. It's, a, it's, not a, spread. it's a drag box. Yeah, I don't even see it so it's almost got the consistency in layman's terms of like um, they, during World War Two they used to use they used to use the term slurry. Like a lever, lever and course. It's yeah, it's like it's well, like it is a slurry. Yeah, it is it is a slurry, but people are more familiar with that term slurry. It's almost got the consistency of like a slush. It's in a box, it gets poured out the back into a box that's got augers. It's got a, a stripe on the back of the box. It just drags down the road and goes across. The box is adjustable in height to achieve yeah, it's, the, it's, Yeah. The squeaky blades, though, it's not a, it's not right. a, not right. a rigid strike off. Right. Then there's a secondary blade that takes out any imperfections. And we do this process. So it sets up like a, like a cement wood, like a concrete mm -hmm. wood. When you say it sets up and hardens, it's more. It's it's it doesn't set up like a concrete because it sets up much faster than a concrete does. Um, it's only got one percent cement. Yeah, it's, cement's it's just a filler. Just an additive. It's just an additive. It doesn't really do much for the mix other than a filler. It introduces some more fines. So it's, it's an asphalt product. Right. It's an emulsion-based asphalt. Cold asphalt. It's cold. Yeah. Yep. It's an emulsified asphalt. Yep. It hardens. Mm -hmm. It's a rapid set. It gets it it gets very hard. And what what the what's happened is is we've done this process for 20, 30 years. I've been doing it since nineteen eighty seven. Right. So basically, what's happened is is Throughout the world, this is primarily used as a preventative maintenance technique. Now, when I started in this business uh, with Rich about 13 years ago, you know, we were trying to get people to preserve their roads, which is a great idea, and you save a lot of money preserving the roads. Unfortunately, most of the people that I was running into, they were the, the roads were beyond the scope of what this product is designed to do. So the town of um, Halifax used to do it like 25 years ago, but then uh, the town of Hingham introduced the program. He used to do it in the 90s. There was a 10-year period we had a public works director that didn't believe 
in this type of treatment. He left, so about 2007, two years after I started, I got a call from the town of Hingham, and um, he said, this is, this is gonna be our program moving forward. He said, uh, he's not an engineer by trade, but he's noticing that the top course of asphalt is not lasting like it used to. So, you know, you used to reclaim a road or pave a road and you'd say, well, that road's done for 20 years. This particular superintendent was seeing that life expectancy lower, lower, lower to the point they were doing mill and overlay roads and they need to be crack sealed in five or six years, three or four years in some cases. So he, he explained the program to me and basically we took some roads that were in probably about as bad as condition as you can imagine. Uh, Industrial Parkway comes to mind. That was the first one we did with him with this methodology. He had his crews literally filling in potholes on this road with, with, with shovels, with hot mix asphalt. We then crack sealed it. They did a hot mix leveling course, which is hot mix asphalt, traditional hot mix asphalt. Um, and then that wouldn't last unless it was combined with this microsurfacing. So then the microsurfacing is put over the top and he's got road. So basically we did that road, it came out pretty good. So 2010, 2011, I started kind of telling some different people about, hey, you know, this guy's doing this. The roads come out pretty good. And what it does is instead of taking roads and reclaiming them and grinding them up, you're able to kind of catch up, so to speak, and for less money and less time, get more work done. Well, you know, I ran across over and over and over again. Yeah, well, how long is it going to last? How long is it going to last? And I he said, well, so far, I've only done these two roads, you know, these two years, this year. So now we've had that program in place in Hingham for 10 years, and we've uh, resurfaced 55 miles of the 110-mile network. And I have a map of that. I think I provided that to you folks. Yeah, I looked at some of those roads. Yeah, yeah. And, and basically what's happened in the last two years is I've taken some surrounding superintendents, and one of the things that they found most interesting is in their town, if a road was paved with traditional hot mix asphalt and it was four years old, it looked different than the road that was two years old. And if it was six years old, it looked dramatically different than the road was two years old. What the road network in Hingham basically looks like is if you drove that map and you didn't have the key on what years they were done, they all look very uniform. I, I drove several of them. Okay. So that program has been in place. I think Jason was involved in his previous career doing GIS over there and was familiar with the program, so. Um, Some of those roads are a lot older than 10 years. Yeah, yeah well, I know that, I know yeah. that. Well, what I'm, it, well, I'm familiar well, with Well, he had the I, cut, the I, cut. I, yeah. I just took, you know, the 10 year olds and just yeah. moved around in the neighborhoods and looked at. Well, I was a little anxious to start it because it was something I wasn't familiar with, but when Harry Sylvester over there had a map of roads he did in the 90s up near Acord Pond, behind Acord Pond and Harvest, they were done in 98, 99, and he said, we did these, and his, his town engineer is a avid hot mix asphalt. Those are the roads I drove. Yeah. So those are 20 I, years old. I, 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 I will tell you this. Yeah. Before everybody starts barking about Birch Street, in comparison to the 20-year-old roads in Hingham, I did see... Of difference in Birch Street, not in in um, road chatter or anything of that, but I did notice shading variations. Now I didn't stop and get out and mm -hmm. visually spend a lot of time, but driving down it in comparison to driving down. Pleasant Street in Hingham or South Pleasant up in the back. Right. 
that were done a number of years ago. Those seem to be uniform. Y yes. Now I didn't, and and it may it may be the nature of the product. Mm -hmm. Today's product versus yesterday's product, but those seem to be a little more consistent in surface color than, or yeah. texture. Texture is one thing, colors another. I gotta say texture only because when I look at it, it looks like it's got areas that are I'll call them bald. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some areas look like I expected, and then it seems to be maybe it's thinner, maybe something happened in the screed process. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing I'd ask you to look at. Right. Up there. I didn't find, and everybody else can speak to it, I didn't find wheel chatter or vehicle chatter when I drove Birch Street. I didn't I didn't find any of that. Right. But I did notice what in my mind might have been some inconsistency in, in in the spreading of the material now that you talk about the screed in the back, maybe the But did you look at it? Before the winter or after the winter? I looked at it before. I looked at it after it so was it brought been, to this board that there was damage. that there was plow damage so there. It could have been the plow damage you were noticing then. I'm just asking. The All question. I'm saying is I've noticed what I would call bald spots, and I would ask you to look at it from of that course, perspective. Sure. From the perspective of actually wheel chatter and that sort of thing, I didn't experience. Mm -hmm. I only drove in one direction, I'll be honest with you. I drove from 53 in, I didn't drive out. So I only drove one lane. Understandable. But that's something from my perspective I would I would like to see you look at and and tell us what it may be. Now from and I'm not gonna speak for anybody else, but from the DPW perspective and what Jason just mentioned is is there's an issue or a belief about plow damage. So I can't speak to that. I'll let Scott speak what he thinks and and listen or or let Paul and these guys weigh in. Can I just address the yep. texture and the color? Yep. What I will say is what'll happen is and Braintree traditionally does their road work very, very, very late in the season every year, unfortunately. We try to get them going. It's a, it's, it's a slow process. They've had the same program that Hingham has had for about 10 years. However, we do most of their work actually in October, which is just at the very, very tail end of our season. And literally every single year, we get phone calls that it's not, the, the color's not uniform, and, and then, but eventually over time, it becomes all one uniform. And, you know, so I, I feel very confident that it'll be one uniform. I, I just, the plow chat is a completely different issue. But I'd just like you to take a look at it from the perspective of coverage. Sure, absolutely. That's basically, I guess, what I'm saying as I'm listening to myself. We could actually to, to, probably do a course here. Well, I, I just, from a perspective of coverage, because mm -hmm. the light and darkness to me represents a coverage issue as opposed to anything else. But mm -hmm. I'm not... You mean the thickness of the coverage? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because those streets up there in Hingham, I mean, I got out and walked. Did you look at the other two streets that they did? To see no, I did. Yeah. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm, the ones that we didn't have any issues with all winter. I didn't look at those. I looked because only I, at I would probably only agree with Scott and, and, and say that there's probably areas that were bald in due to plowing. That's a totally separate discussion. But that's my point, is you're seeing balding, but is that due to the application or is that due to the damage that happened? I'm asking the people to put it down to verify what the issue is, what they think the issue is. Yeah. I just, you know, I didn't see the chatter and I didn't see... I, well, I, I saw this. There is chatter, plow chatter on Birch Street. There's okay. no doubt about that. That's, that's definite. Um, as far as... Would that lead to dis... Difference in colors? No. Wouldn't you wouldn't see the um, balding? 
Oh, it could. could from material. It could. Just in that spot. Yeah, yeah. just in that spot. That's what I think spot. you're talking about, though, right? Yeah. Are you talking no, about, talking about, about when, you, when you drive down the Bird overall Street, appearance. You, it, it almost looks like, you know, you see areas and it looks like that's been sealed and then the next area looks kind of thin and then the next one looks like it's been sealed and... And and it's not it's like area it's, by it's, area. Yeah, not it's not in strips. You might you might go two hundred feet, right. and everything looks cool, and then you see a, a spot that's 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 across the road, and you look at it, and you know when you see the grainy asphalt, yeah. Yeah. it almost looks like that. So you know, could that be that the plow ripped the stuff off? I don't know. I'm just asking to have it looked at from that perspective. That of of consistency of thickness sure. going down because I know in Hingham I got out and I walked those streets and I was impressed with the fact that there was not a crack seal anywhere and the road was done 10 years ago right and in my mind if we get 10 years down the road before we have to do a crack seal I'm happy right because we ain't getting two years down the road and we're crack sealing yeah I would never so, sit here but publish that it will last 10 years of crack seal but but I but I'm I, 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 I didn't, I, 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 didn't I, that, I didn't say that you yeah. you proposed it I'm saying from what I saw what right. you saw you had the map what I visually saw. inspected yeah. I was impressed with that fact mm -hmm. if we get five years down the road I'm happy we're not getting um I, I live off of West Elm about 10 years ago they paved it two years later they crack sealed it now it's a disaster it's just unraveling potholes and it's junk and and that's the kind of thing that i'm hoping to come up with something that helps us to avoid that or, or get at least a little further down the road i live in town as well and i've seen the same thing yeah once you start crack sealing ball game's over i don't i don't care what you do once the road cracks and i see that those little black lines running all over the place, that road's junk. It's just on its way to junk. Right. Well, that's the whole... And it's unfortunate, but that's... Well, I, I, to a degree, as long as you catch it early with crack seal. I mean, look at look at Route 53 down through Duxbury. Mass DOT crack sealed that 15 years ago. They haven't done anything since then. Well, they don't do anything for a long well, time. But look at the road, though. I mean, there's not a pothole in it. True. And we, yeah, we did the crack seal. You know, it was done, but it was done 15 years ago. It is. Once... But I hear what you're saying. Our experience around here is once we crack seal and they just go on a terror of deterioration. The on, though, too, some of the roads. It, well, the, 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 for myself, I'm looking at it from two different things. I'm wondering, I know when we go through here and we do some of these roads, we're doing a, a top coat and then doing your, your, I mean, we did it on Water Street, I think we did it on Bird Street, we did it on all three of them. A it, level. it was the same methodology. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm, I'm wondering if in some of the new, to be proactive is to look at some of the newest subdivisions that have roadways that aren't crack sealed yet, that aren't, have a lot of damage in them, if it would be behoove us to take and That's basically you're still, move, like yeah, but you're still coating, you're still coating like move. someone's driveway, you're taking, people used to go out and take the five gallon buckets out and we'll put a level out there, seal coat on a driveway. Well, um, you're going to spend how much money on a street like mine? People will shite. I'm, I, well, I'm not saying we can have do it. I'm just saying the cost would be so much less not to have to take. I don't disagree. And, and but we have so many. Well, this is the problem. That's the problem. That's that's the, problem. It, it, the, the problem is this is the problem that every town's in for the most part is any preventative maintenance you do in any facet of, of your life is going to save you money in the long run. You know that by changing the oil in your car. You know right. that by painting your house. By jumping ahead and doing the microsurfacing on a road that's in very good condition, it's going to cost a lot less than it will to level level with asphalt and microsurfacing. That being said, you have such a political... No, um, trust me, I, I didn't say it was... What we're going to do? No, no. I, I, I think get, that I think we need to I'm, be a little bit more proactive in crack seal right. potentially. Like again, my, I hate to use mine, but you hit the streets that are between, between five and ten right. years old and crack seal those. But well, see, there's a very that. inexpensive process. You know, when I say inexpensive. How old was Captain Torio when you did that one? Crack sealed it. You guys Captain Torio is about fifteen years old. So it's probably it's been ten, 10 years, years in yeah. before you. Crack yeah, because I know. And that was that, but that should have probably been crack sealed. Yeah, well, when the paper five years early came yeah. in, we were very aggressive. 
<laughs> we did five years worth of crack selling on the first year yeah, but because I'm, we had the money. But we I'm saying, able. like, if you look at Cap Three, that one got a lot of cracks in it by the time the cracks. Should we, we hit that look one at five years in thickening the process of the microsurfacing? Yes. No. Does that help? The no, microsurfacing that's on the three streets that you have now is fine. There's no problem with thickness. There's no problem with wearability or durability. The only problem that I can see, and I've looked at all three roads, and Rich has looked at far more roads than I have in his life. I have a lot of confidence in those three roads. The only issue, and it is very cosmetic, and it's not attractive, is the plow chat. So that's what leads people see the plow chat, or they think something's wrong, that it's okay. coming off, and that's a completely right. different issue. Um, I've driven um, Water Street and Third Street frequently. I don't, for, unfortunately, I don't get down to the other, down the, down the other street very often. Yeah, I, um, but I see them frequently. I drive probably Water Street two or three times a week. Right. Um, there's a couple of tall marks on Water Street. And on Water Street, there's a couple of things I was going to bring up. It almost looks like, now that I realize how you guys do this, is that there may be, have been something in the mix, like a stone or something like that, that actually pulled a strip. That's a drag mark. A drag mark. Drag mark. In, in that, ultimately, yeah. because now I know what you're doing. Yeah, you're doing. you're dragging that's something. That's why that's a drag mark. Right. Yeah. And it's, so there's a few of those on Water Street. But there's Scott, what's the issue with the potential of rubber bottoms on the plow blades? We'll have ice back. We tried rubber. When I started in 85, we ran the synthetic blades. One thing, we can't afford them. And you're changing them halfway through a storm. They don't last. Yeah, That's um, why we went back to iron blades. There's a, the town of Fairfield in Connecticut um, is an extensive user of surface treatment, all surface treatments, not just microsurface. And they, um, they've switched all their plow blades to the urethane blades. And Scott Bartlett has spoken at the APWA meeting a couple of times about that. He's the director about what he saw the cost and, and his his experiences from switching over, and they use all kinds of surface treatments. They're not they're not just micro. They do chip seals. They do um, ultra thin bonded. They do microsurfacing. They do an all sorts of crack seal. They do significant amount of work down there. It's a very large community, and he he reluctantly changed four or five trucks because of his commitment to the surface treatment part of his program to urethane blades, and he he had the same pushback about ice pack and things like that and they and they found that they were getting better plowing activity from their plows because they use because of the salting and the amount of all that pretreatment nowadays that they weren't getting any ice pack at all. I think they had one storm. I'm not I'm not trying to I'm just speaking from someone else's experience that uses nothing but urethane blades now. And then and in a in a in it's a an investment and a commitment. In a strange twist of irony, the Board of Public Works they had one really bad storm. They had ice pack in Fairfield, but they had ice pack in all the communities surrounding. Kind of not unlike a storm we had this year. Yeah. Everybody got caught with pack. So the board voted against. They wanted to switch the rubber blades back to the metal blades, and the union voted it down. They let the guys that did the plowing like the rubber blades better because they weren't hitting the Less driver structure. fatigue. So is what he said. Kind he of a strange a very thing. Good program they, on they, they fought it, they fought, they fought it, they fought it. And then it. when they got there, they wouldn't <laughs> give it up. They wouldn't give it up, yeah. yeah. So. But Hingham uses steel blades. Yeah, okay, Hingham. Yeah, so there's no reason to jump. That was a conversation I had, had talking about rubber blades um, at one point. But yeah, there's no. The plow chatter on Birch is due to probably. It's a, it's a very high friction surface treatment. So it. It's either it could be due to um, weak trip edge, spindle and trip edge that hold it straight, that are too aggressive on the plow angle. It could be front end suspension as well, but typically it's a, it's a weak trip edge or a too aggressive plow angle, and it, it just trips the trip edge. And when the blade kicks back, it hops up in the air. When it comes down, it chops at the surface. And that happens sometimes, you know, with older. I'm not sure if the truck was an older vehicle or not, but yeah, I'm not sure what plowed it. Yeah. So in other words, if you have one of your older vehicles and the front end springs are gone and the plow's bouncing, if it's on traditional hot mix asphalt, it's just going to. Yeah, is that something that can be repaired? My springs are gone, and I jump. <laughs> is that something that can be spot repaired? The 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 the, uh, the micro, the micro. yeah. Well, it can be. Um, it's usually not necessary, uh, but it can be. It can be. Mm -hmm. 
So you're saying it's more cosmetic than it is. Oh, it is absolutely cosmetic. Yeah. Okay. Do, uh, well, I'll ask the loaded question. So we have a warranty on this of some nature or form? There's a two-year warranty on the product. And, and what does that warranty mean, that the product won't fail? Correct. And what is a characteristic of product failure? It would um, pretty much be driven off the road onto the side of the road. I mean, when it fails, it fails, and I've, I have never seen it. No, but I mean... We'd see a pile of something on the yeah. side of the road. It would, it would, it would yeah, bare pavement on the okay. wheel. On the I'm wheel. Just lane. asking what yeah. Yeah, what it, it, what the characteristic of failure is. Fail flaking. Uh, uh, no, uh, it, flaking. But I'll explain exactly what failure would look like. And this is when it, this is when I would get a phone call and say, and listen, we got a problem. Is if it looks like a pothole, but it's three eighths of an inch deep. Okay. <laughs> so it's like our inch and a half that you see around town. Yeah, scales. Yeah. Yeah. It's scales. It was scale, scale off. off. It looked like a scale off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, like and a that, shed. And, and that and one of the reasons that the the level hot mix level and micro surfacing together, it's kind of like when uh, chocolate meets peanut butter with the the Reese's. Yeah, yeah. In other words, the hot mix. If you did a hot mix leveling course that was an inch thick, an inch and a half in the center, and tapered it down. It wouldn't last. No. On that road, if you did micro surfacing, it wouldn't last. The two products combined last because the hot mix asphalt gives it structure, and the micro surfacing seals the top. But in addition to sealing the top, since the hot mix asphalt is still green and fresh, it hasn't oxidized. It's black. It's in blocks. It's tacky. It's tacky. It bonds really it, well. Yeah, it just bonds okay. really well. So that's. We have not. So had it has to go down when that that surface is tacky. That's the. That's recommended. That's the that's the key, yeah, to getting a good bond. To, to this to this process, that's the key to the success. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we we do a ton of, of micro surfacing. Some some communities that have, for instance, they have chapter ninety money. The town of uh, the city of Newton also has ten million dollars a year that they spend on road work. So, so that's where I want to which is, the reason we're looking years. around is we're lucky if yeah, we can you, get you got us on the first one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're lucky no, but, if we can get well, pennies. So here's the way it works: is a certain handful of towns, probably more than fifty percent, run on chapter ninety one. But there's some towns that get large road bonds. When they have these large road bonds, they can do crack sealing micro surfacing on on a four year old road to be right. preventative. You, right. If yeah. you don't have the, the you, you the get, bond money or the yeah. extra money well, you and you work out that job. road so you do you have money to do it. Verification on in, that in line. Yeah, they've committed to the pavement preservation so they're further down down that road, you know, right. and not to, I stop yeah, and and I'm not, so they're doing those neighborhoods that you were talking about. I'm not and I'm not I understand we don't we financially can't do that, mm -hmm. and, politi not? and politically it's not good. Right. But when we politically are going to take one road, all right, and and rebuild it completely, and it's going to take two years of Chapter 90 money, that politically is not good either because right. it's not taking care of someone else's road that they feel well, they need. Well, we we to. have a presentation, and you know I could bore you to death with a big PowerPoint presentation right. of mathematics. Mathematically. If you're working on your worst roads first, right. it's costing you a tremendous amount of money versus using preventative maintenance. It's the same thing as your house. If you just let everything fall apart and you don't paint it and you let the siding fall off the side, then you got to replace the siding. So basically, if you work on the worst roads first all the time... You may never catch it. You'll never catch it. But by, what it is is it's a balancing act between trying to take a certain amount of money and do a little bit of preventative maintenance, a little bit of reconstruction, a little bit of rehabilitation. Um, the process that we did on those three streets kind of takes roads that probably in years past in Pembroke probably would have fallen into the reclaim category, at least Birch would have. Um, I think water was in better condition and spring was okay as well, those probably would have fallen into the mill and overlay category. Um, so 
you know, you, you got a little, you got more work done, and, and I feel um, that strongly that it would last long, much longer than a mill and overlay. We're seeing mill and overlays last, you know, four, four or five years at the most right now. Right. You know, before without your treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, mill and then just overlay with straight asphalt. Right. So you guys have looked at Bird Street, and you don't, you're not concerned at all. I was very concerned when I heard that there were issues with it, and then I drove out and I knew exactly what it was because I do this all day, every day. I look at roads. Um, I was concerned that there would be scaling or flaking, uh, debonding of the material. There's no debonding. Um, I'm kind of bummed out because I know the plow chatter looks unattractive, but from a from a performance perspective, I have no con I have no concerns on even it. with the plow chatter. No, I know. haven't seen Bird Street yet, but I will go look at it. Yeah. But I haven't had well, a Please to do that. and and just you know when just out of curiosity, when is your season start to do this application, and when is it finished in this area? Um, it's it just not as early as May, but yeah. it, it you have to wait for it to get to a certain temperature. Yeah, it's going to be 45, 50 and rising. Um, and maintaining that. Yeah, we, we maintain. prefer to work in the summer. No, no, <laughs> I understand that, but I'm looking at yeah. what's the best thing for the and product. Uh, the best thing for the product is that summer. You know, June, July, so August. You know, okay, that's the best thing the for product. the product. That's, that's where you get your best That's what's really going to bind it. The hotter, the hotter, the sunnier. Okay. Uh, the quick you the, get the, the problem is, Paul, nobody paves till the last minute. No, but it's but just that's, the nature of the industry. Well, that's one of the reasons. And then these guys get stuck on the tail end. Well, yeah, no, but, but this is what's happening with a couple communities um, is that we we were responsible for the paving, and we can get that done in a timely fashion. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the contract is not doing other state work, larger projects, the, the typical, you know, the, the paving contracts in the area. So yeah. They, get, they, they do you guys last. Well, you know? it's, it, it, it's just the nature of yep. even even in in private business and and you know paving around buildings and stuff. It's always the last thing to get done. It's right. always at the last minute. It's always just before the plant closes. It's always you know how can we squeeze this in? Yeah. Right. You know, and then you guys are stuck on on well, top. Not of the only that, but it shows on the quality of work you get from them. No, well. I, I know mean, that. Look right? at Oak Street when Aggregate Industry did that. What was what that? Five, six? Was it eight years ago? Maybe I forget now. But that was, that a, was I remember that. That was in a snowstorm. Now, yeah, they paved Oak Street during a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. But that being said, in the last couple of years, we've actually been responsible on the project with some communities for doing the hot mix asphalt paving, the leveling course. By doing that, we've been able to get there in a timely fashion. However, a lot of the towns prefer to have TL Edwards do the paving as an existing in-house contract. And frankly, it makes no difference to me who does the paving no, as I long understand. as they're there in a timely fashion. I understand. So, um, as long as the schedule's met. Yeah, in other words, Braintree, I, I fight with, you know, they're my best and worst customers in a sense. Right. Let's get it done, guys. Let's get it done. And then they, well, we got to seal them before the end. And then, you know, we're blowing leaves off the street. It's just, you want to get it done during the season. Right. You know, you want, you want it to be as, as sunny, as hot as possible. My only question is on high speed. All right. Anything else? I We appreciate you coming in. You said to Gene, we can't do high street. This bad light's too, 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 too I, bad. I think I, I'll let Rich take a look at it as well, High Street. <laughs> That's the one that... For uh, a, a hot mix level and micro. One's up to the heavy one then. One's up to the one yeah, one. Runs to yeah, runs very yeah. Runs... I don't want to push it. Take a look at it. If it's no good, then I don't want to do I, it. I think, I think that's not, you know, in other words, you know, we got a, I think we have a good start. We did the three roads. Unfortunately, we do have the plow chatter. Um, which that's not a core from High Street, is it? No, you what this is... Door stop? No, well, there's more mix this in is, there than there is on High Street. This is, <laughs> that's cold in place. This is, if, this is if things got crazy in here. I wanted a weapon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is actually uh, something that I... Would, one of the things we saw in the marketplace is just basically what 80% of the towns are spending all their money on is milling and overlaying. And milling and overlaying does work if it's done on the correct candidate. But a lot of times people have been doing milling and overlaying on candidates that are too far gone 
So then they mill, and after if you see a road and after you mill it, you can see all the cracks and stuff underneath it. If you put a hot mix pavement over the top of it, you know it's not going to last. It's, 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 got, it's got nothing to do with the paver. It's just not what the process is designed for. So Seal Coating as a company um, invested uh, quite a bit of equipment in a process that's primarily used in cold weather climates where we actually mill up to six inches down, mix the material, we do, a, we do cores first, have an engineered design process, and we actually mill the road and actually it comes out of the miller after it's been mixed with foamed a asphalt cement um, and sometimes a little Portland cement and it goes back down. So this is a section of Pond Street in Braintree um, which if you know the area at all, do you know Braintree Five Corners yep. where everyone crashes into each other? Yep. If you come up past that and head towards Randolph there's a pinch point that to go from Randolph to Braintree, you'd have to go down through Holbrook, or you have to get on 128. It's the only way through. So they go, they get a hunt, they get 20,000 cars a day on that road. Uh, the town engineer John Morse has milled and paved it seven times in 33 years. Um, it definitely is a candidate for what you call full depth reclamation. But if you have 20,000 cars on a road every day that's dirt. Um, and a huge percentage of the people don't have driver's licenses either, but the, uh, <laughs> that's, a <different> discussion. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different issue. But anyways, so long story short, we this was our first project with this process. We milled down four inches and put four inches, comes back to four and a half inches back. I'll let you hold that. It's, it's, a, it's a train going down the road. It mills it up, mixes in the foam to asphalt. The chute from the milling machine puts it right back into a paver and you put it right back down. How long does that process take? I mean, how, how much can you put down in a day? Um, about 10,000 square yards a day. So that's... Of mm -hmm. a load that... Two-thirds of a mile. Straight road. road. Yeah. Two -thirds one lane, two-thirds of a mile. No, one, it would be one lane. A lane mile is 7,000 square yards at 12 feet wide. One lane mile, 7,000 square yards. So it would be like two-thirds of a mile, both sides. Yeah. yeah. Drivable at the end of the day. At the end of the day, oh, yeah. it's done. Yeah. And that's why they did it. It saved a lot of money. It was half the cost, less than half the cost of reclaiming it. But for them, it was a convenience issue. It does need to be covered. It can't. It's not a product that you can leave uncovered. You either have to pave it, put a surface treatment on it. It cannot be left to traffic for longer than two weeks. So you got to seal this right afterwards. Yes, we seal it the same day. Okay. With, with a fog this seal. Got a treatment on it. That's got a, a thin, thin asphalt emulsion a fog, seal. fog seal. But it needs to have something more substantial over the top. About 50% of our customers are going to probably be covering it with a hot mix asphalt, inch and a half overlay. Um, and then in rural areas, you'll have people using a, a process called chip seal, which I don't think would be a good fit for this neighborhood. Um, and then Braintree's case, they do so much microsurfacing, they were very comfortable with doing microsurfacing on it. So. so if Right. So that would be a high street type product, wouldn't it? I didn't know. It would be. I never thought about the fact of being able to drive on it right after because that's going to be. That's the key. That's a game changer. Yeah, that's the whole thing. If people, especially with you guys, with that, that the, the corridor project, you know, if you if you try to do a road and you, and you have people are just so fed up, the the Braintree, just they're all the the they're so. They might have fifteen or 20,000 residents, but during the day it's 50,000 because right. of all the businesses. So anything they do is just, you know, they can't disrupt it. It has to be done at night or it has to be done right. When they do you get have any jobs going on this year? Yeah, we're going to be doing Commercial Street in Braintree. We have jobs set up in Manchester, Dartmouth. What's the, what's the cost? What's the cost for this? This is $9 a square yard, roughly. Plus then a one inch overlay on top. Plus whatever you choose to top it with. Well, you have to put an overlay yeah. over it. You have yeah. to put have something to. over the top of it. Something either being a chip seal, surface treatment. Well, I mean, I mean, if you put a surface treatment over it, you don't have to put a. a, a that is something over that it. That is something. Yeah. All right, we have to. Uh, All right, move on. We have to move on. We got okay. other people waiting. Thank you, gentlemen. You'll Can check you out High Street. Do and come so back to us. Absolutely. Look at it. Uh, look at it. But also High, High Street. Street. Yes. Yes. About 
That I have looked at it, and fans' evaluation of that is, is pretty close. I mean, it's, it's just a little bit too far gone for Shim and, and Micro. But I'll take another look at it after right. this winter and see if I change my mind. We're looking at Edgewater, too. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'll say it. look at Edgewater. What should we do out there? I would crack over again. Crack soon. Okay. It needs well, to be cracked soon. Sorry is. about the chat. Well, there's I one spot that needs to be looked at besides crack zone, and that is... is well, test on what? It's like anything else. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Gene, people's eyes are Gene, if we want a test street? How small a street is too small for that? Do for that. Do low road. Do low road. I don't think you get enough mix. I don't know. How much mix do you How need? Much mix do three you inches. Need? You need a minimum of three yeah. inches. There's three inches up there. It's been overlaid once. There's grass coming through. There's not three No, inches no, that's there. because the street's but you gone. Can't, but like you said you can, put, you can put material out ahead. There's at least three mm -hmm. inches there because I can tell by the curb lines. lines. One time yeah. when you're in town, go to Low Road. I mean, check right near the country. I'm in town every day. Low Road. Up by the water tank. Up by the golf course. Up by the golf course. It's a dead end street. It's See a good one to you, test on because that way if it gets if it's shit, it's right? Really it's on a road that doesn't matter. Right, I'll volunteer it, and if it comes out like junk, it's my fault. Put glass in it, Jason. Yeah. That was my latest greatest. Check game. it out. You can't think before the grass the starts anymore. to grow. Yeah, before so before yeah. the sun starts. Right. Yeah, when you get up at the circle <laughs> up there, I'm charging the town for cutting grass. A good thing to do is anytime someone's doing either utility work or something on the road. You know, you can just take a quick peek and then, you know, you kind of yeah, check it out. Man. Check it out. I will. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you, you guys. Hi. Um, Is Melissa here? Hi there. How are you? Or, Missy. I'm sorry, Missy. Still upstairs. Yeah, Still downstairs. No. No, no, we're ready. Okay. I actually have one thing I have to go look at, then I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I yeah. recommend looking yeah, at it. Yeah, let's, let's, let's take a look at it. No, no. Yep, I'm not recommend, You're not recommending it. I recommend you right, right. 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 Let's look at it. That was a good recommendation. Let's see what, what they come up with. If there's enough thickness, the only issue is you do have to have enough room to do it to. I understand. Yeah. Just like the hot and place, same yeah. thing. You exactly. Don't you don't have the base, you don't have the base. Yeah. How much do you think is out on High Street? Okay. Based on areas, you only get two, maybe three. That's what I thought. I drew it and it doesn't look very good. That was CNC years ago. Oh, you did. Well, they came in, but okay. It's a. I'll give up my chair. There you go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ben Bastinelli. Hi. Paul Whitman. Jason Federico. Hi. Paul Whitman. Jason Federico. Hi. 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 Originally located in Plymouth. Uh, We're from Plymouth. Yes. Uh, we lived in Plymouth for 40 years. So this is you. You've moved to Pembroke. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four years ago. This this Bethesda house is right now on High Street in Pembroke. Is this is this a new venture? A two yeah two have been open since 2016. Yes. We got 501c3 certified the year before. So this isn't something you've been doing for the last 20 years? No. Okay. Um, Gene, what size service is this at $10,000? It's because it's a high sprinkler man, and it's based on square footage of the building. Okay. What size tap is it, though? Do we know it's yet? It's going to be a four-inch sprinkler with what a one-inch domestic oven. What would the four-inch be on our service taps at four inches? I think just under twenty thousand. Yeah. Because that was my question. It's always been my question on our rates: is why do we have certain things by square footage and right. certain things by size? It should be one or the other. The 
for clarification, that this stuff is like totally new to me, so yeah. we've learned a bit of, through this process. The fire sprinkler actually warrants a, a two inch. My thought was to bring a four inch down while going through this expensive process so that we had, and maybe this is the wrong thought process, to bring down a four inch so that in case the other line failed 10 years down the road, we would have access to uh, domestic and fire at the same time. But all we really need is, is two inch. What is the two inch? Your, your fees are based on square footage of the building. It doesn't matter about, if it's I'm two, about inch, two inch, four inch. I'm talking about two inch service connection. What's the two inch 6, service connection? 6,300. Because to me, I guess back to my whole thing that there shouldn't be a weird square footage based one and it should be just based on the size of the main. Nothing to do with me. I am. <laughs> but that's my Muhammad Lasso. Was this engineered to a four inch or you just decided to go four inch? It was engineered to a two inch. Engineered to a two inch. By uh, Yankee Sprinkler out of Bridgewater. And that was approved by the fire department? Um, they approved it. They have not seen the plan. Have you ever looked at a dry system? Seen? And what the extra cost for a dry system would be? Um, oh, yeah. A dry system, they said it would have to be commercial. You know, and um, it could only be temporary. So yeah. dry, dry system, you mean that the trucks pull up to and plug into? No. No, like uh, a dry system being it's, it's um, chemically um, not water-based. No, I have not. That's so the fee for this is ten grand. Is that my understanding? Based on the current fee schedule on okay. fire sprinkler and square footage of any building, okay. no matter what the square footage is under right. ten thousand, it's ten thousand dollars, and then twenty and thirty it goes up from there. Okay. See, I always found that to be weird. I don't. I think you based on the size of your service, personally. So. I don't know, minimum say we should be 6300 bucks, but that's just me saying, you know, and, then, and that's what I and, and you know why it's based on the square footage. No, why? Because it's always more money. Yeah. Whoever came up with the fee structure, yeah. that's how they came up with it. <laughs> Which one gets us more money? Yeah. yeah. Do we, is there... Any non-profit provisions in any of our fee structures? The only thing that previous boards have ever done is the 40 Bs, whatever the affordable units are, they paid 1,000 instead of 2,000 for the individual hookups for the houses. So half. Yep. Okay. So yeah, the see. only thing I will say is you've got another project going in corporate park that's the same thing. And they and their attorney have not requested to drop any of their tie-in fees. Were substantially a lot higher than this are we, one. Are we talk, we're not talking about partners. Yes. Yeah, well, partners is a different partners. You can't look at like this. I'm just putting it out there. It's a non-profit. I work for partners. Just trust me. They make, they make no, I, 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 get I the understand where you're coming from just, in terms of how I they're legally to, how they're legally but, put out. And I didn't. All. I didn't I put that out. I didn't put that out there as an avenue to circumvent. I put it out as an avenue to know if there's right. a precedent out there that has happened before right. in terms right. of the only one has been forty Bs. Okay. So, so like I said, the other one is a thirty thousand square foot building, so they're looking at it to get if it's twenty or thirty grand because of the yep. fire sprinkler. Yeah. Right out of the gate. And then there's there's a four inch domestic and a meter, so they've got that charge on top. The only thing they have looked into is they've been meeting with the town administrator and their attorney for a payment in lieu of taxes because they're supposed to be a non -profit. That's That's true. They run, run under that. But the, it's more of a business than it is. That's fine. I just, wanted the info, I just want to let you guys know the information I have. What happens from here? And I'm not, and I'm not saying that I'm voting. I'm, I'm just saying is that... It's, it's a different animal than... I'm just trying to gather yeah. all the pots and, like and pieces. Camp, there's a camp uh, in town that's a non-profit too, isn't it? Camp Pembroke, and they, I don't know, they give 10000 a year to the general fund or whatever they worked out for. Right, but I mean, taxes also. they didn't get any, did they get any relief? Or? That was way before my time, right. you're talking 1960. That would be the only other one I would think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fire sprinkle was either out there. They probably well, don't. they ran their own water main in there because Elwood Senior did it. Yeah. Okay. So. 
credit? Is there a mechanism to take this $10,000 fee and put it into a payment plan? You or guys is can a work fee, out whatever. Or is you decide. A, That's set up. We've done that before. But made them payment plans. Mm -hmm. We do it with 